the Patents on Translated video series, in association with Shine. What is a provisional patent application? A provisional patent application is a patent application that is filed at the Patent Office, but which is not searched and examined. Unlike a non-provisional patent application, your provisional patent application is never searched and examined, and therefore cannot become a patent. Instead, it acts like a place setter, giving you 12 months patent pending status within which to file a full non-provisional patent application if you want to claim priority back to your provisional patent application. Think of it a bit like booking a ticket really early to see a big movie at the cinema. When you book it, it doesn't mean you've seen the movie yet, but it reserves you a seat and stops other people from getting that seat before you. In the same way, filing a provisional patent application does not get you a patent and, technically speaking, does not give you any patent protection, but it does reserve your seat to be able to file a non-provisional patent application within 12 months and hopefully go on to get a patent based off your provisional patent application filing date. On top of that, just like reserving a seat at the movie stops other people from getting that seat, so your provisional patent application can ultimately block other people from being able to patent your invention before you. This is done via what's called claiming priority. Basically, once you file your provisional patent application, you get 12 months patent pending status within which to file your non-provisional patent application. If you don't file a non-provisional patent application and claim priority to your provisional patent application, your provisional patent application will simply expire 12 months after it's filed and effectively becomes irrelevant and useless. But if you get your non-provisional patent application filed within that 12 months, you can do what's called claiming priority to your provisional patent application. In basic terms, if all goes well, this backdates the filing of your patent application from your non-provisional patent application filing date all the way back to your provisional patent application filing date. This is the real purpose of a provisional patent application, and it can, in some situations, be very important. For example, if you filed a non-provisional patent application, but another person had gone public, let's say on the internet, for example on YouTube, with the same invention concept as you, three months before you filed your non-provisional patent application, then you wouldn't be able to patent that invention concept ever, because at the time you filed your non-provisional patent application, which is called your filing date, your invention was not new. But if it turned out you filed a provisional patent application before the time the other person went public, and you claimed priority to your provisional patent application from your non-provisional patent application, then if all goes well, you would beat their public disclosure and still be able to patent that invention, because your filing date would be backdated all the way to your provisional patent application filing date, rather than your non-provisional patent application filing date. This is what's often referred to as an effective filing date. So in this example, although your non-provisional patent application filing date is after the public disclosure of that other person, your effective filing date of your application for patent is your provisional patent application filing date, and you therefore beat the other person's disclosure. That person's disclosure is an example of what's called intervening prior art. Intervening prior art is anything that comes up between your priority document filing date, in this case, your provisional patent application filing date, and your non-provisional patent application filing date. And despite what you may have heard from any other company, this is the point and the function of a provisional patent application, to beat any intervening prior art that comes up in between your provisional patent application filing date and your non-provisional patent application filing date. One of the reasons provisional patent applications are so popular is that there's far less requirements to filing them than a full non-provisional patent application. Whereas a non-provisional patent application must have technical aspects like claims and an abstract, as well as being structured in quite a particular way, there are very few technical requirements 
for a provisional patent application. And provisional patent applications often just include a relatively simple description document with any necessary drawings to understand the invention. It also tends to be far cheaper to file a provisional patent application, and it's not uncommon for inventors to do it themselves, thereby avoiding any fees that tend to have to be paid to patent attorneys and patent agents for drafting and filing of non-provisional patent applications. So in short, a provisional patent application is a patent application filed at the patent office which is never searched and examined. It doesn't get you any patent protection, but it does get you patent pending status and effectively reserves your seat for filing a non-provisional patent application within 12 months and claiming priority back to it. If a non-provisional patent application that claims priority is not filed within 12 months of a provisional patent application, the provisional patent application will simply expire 12 months after it was filed and effectively becomes irrelevant and useless. So action must be taken to file a non-provisional patent application within 12 months of filing the provisional. If you successfully claim priority from your non-provisional patent application to your provisional patent application, then if all goes well, it allows you to beat any intervening prior art including public disclosures and patent applications from other inventors that come in the time between your non-provisional patent application filing date and your provisional patent application filing date. A provisional patent application is cheap to file, and there are very few technical and formal requirements to drafting a provisional patent application compared to drafting a non-provisional patent application. Two last things to end. One, There's no requirement to file a provisional patent application, and the patenting process can just be started with a full non-provisional patent application without a provisional patent application being filed at all. However, due to the many benefits described in this video, it's very common for inventors to start the patenting process by getting patent pending with a provisional patent application. And two, despite what you've heard and bad teachings from other companies, Filing of a provisional patent application does not get you any patent protection. So if you hear someone say, I have a provisional patent, that is wrong. Filing a provisional patent application does not in any way get you a patent, but it does get you 12 months patent pending status within which to file a non-provisional patent application and claim priority back to your provisional patent application filing date. If you like the idea of drafting and filing your own provisional patent application, just be aware you can try out the program iPatent Pending, full name I Have the Power to Get Patent Pending, completely free. It shows how to draft a provisional patent application from scratch using the basic example of the invention Spoon, a very simple invention which makes it easy to understand. It also includes the USPTO PPA filing video, a full screen capture video showing how to file a provisional patent application in minutes via the USPTO online filing system. And it even includes a provisional patent application template, which can be downloaded even on the free trial. If you want access, you can unlock the full program anytime at theinventorsjourney.com.